Hey friend, thanks for popping in. I got a great word for you today. I want to talk about why God tests us. I'm looking at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 17 to 19, which says this, by faith Abraham, when God tested him. I want you to notice, God tested him. God will test you, God will test me. By faith Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had embraced the promises. Hallelujah. I hope that you have embraced the promises God has spoken over your life. Well, he who had embraced the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son, even though God said to him, it's through Isaac, your offspring will be reckoned. Abraham reasoned that God could even raise the dead. And so in a manner of speaking, he did receive Isaac back from death. So here's what I want to zero in on. It's this statement, when God tested him. Think about that. Why would God have to test Abraham? Why would God have to test anyone for that matter? God knows whether or not you're going to pass a test or fail a test before it even starts. And so what's the purpose of the test? When you're in grade school, you know, we kind of we do our learning before the test, and the purpose of the test is to reveal to the teacher whether we learned anything or not. But when God tests us, it's not so he can discover anything. God knows everything. He knows whether you're going to pass or fail before the test begins. So what's the purpose of the test? The test is not about God learning anything. The test is not about discovering where you're at. The test is about changing where you're at. The test is about transformation. James uh, chapter 1, verse 2 says it this way, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, when you face trials of many kind, because the testing of your faith develops perseverance. What does testing do? Testing develops things in you. It develops perseverance. And perseverance must finish its work so that you can become mature and complete, not lacking anything. Do you hear that? There's a purpose in the test. And the purpose of the test is development. It's about you maturing, you growing, you becoming stronger and more complete. There's things that we're missing, okay? There's things that I'm missing, you're missing, and we won't get what we're missing unless we experience tests. Even Abraham, who is the father of faith, he was missing something. That's why God tested him. You say, faith? No, no, he wasn't missing faith. God knew he had faith, okay? He's the guy who, uh, when he was 75 years old, God promised him a son, and he stood on that promise without wavering for 25 years till he was 100. His wife was 65 when the promise came. She was 90. The Bible says even though he knew his body was as good as dead and his wife's womb was dead, he didn't waver one bit. He didn't listen to all the voices that said this is impossible. No, he was fully assured that God would keep his promise. Abraham had faith, okay? Uh, Abraham was the father of faith. So why, after passing that enormous faith test, why would God have to test him later on with his son? Because he was missing something that he needed, and the test developed it in his heart. What do you think he got through that test? Well, if you read the end, I'll skip down to it. It's Genesis chapter 22, uh, verse 12. At the end of his test, where he has to offer his son Isaac on an altar, a voice shouts out of heaven and says, Abraham, Abraham, do not stretch out your hand against the lad. Do nothing to him. For now I know that you fear God. Say fear. This wasn't a test of his faith. Now most tests, a lot of our tests are tests of faith. That's why it's the testing of your faith develops Da, 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 da. This wasn't a test of his faith. He already passed that test. This was a test of the fear of the Lord. And obviously, he wasn't there yet. God, When God says, now I know that you fear me, it's not because I wasn't sure and so I had to take this, I had to put you through this test so I could find out. He didn't have the fear of the Lord at the level that God wanted him to be at. But once he went through the test 
and it passed the test. He came to a place where God could say, there it is. There it is. Now I see it. Now I know that you fear me. Hallelujah. You know, many of us today, believers, uh, we're, we're still growing in our faith. But I'll tell you something. As you grow in your faith in God, God's going to want to develop something else in you. And that is not only the faith in God, but the fear of the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I call them wax on and wax off. You kind of, if you ever watched the Karate Kid, these were these were two things that uh, young Daniel had to do uh, to develop blocking skills to stop the enemy uh, from being able to land punches. Well, I, I consider faith in God and the fear of God. Wax on and wax off. These are the two things, these two practices, faith in God and fear of God. These are the two things that when you develop them in your life, they give you the blocking skills so that the devil just can't land a punch on you. We need both. We need the faith in God and we need the fear of the Lord on our lives. Many believers aren't really afraid of God. Many believers think they can kind of just do what they want and God will love them no matter what. Many people think... They don't really have to say yes to God. It's kind of like, you know, sometimes I say yes to him, sometimes I don't. Well, friend, I'll tell you, that doesn't lead to a powerful life. We've got to develop the fear of the Lord that when God says something, it's, yes, sir, I'm on it. Hallelujah. That's what this test was for Abraham. It was about developing the fear of the Lord so that Abraham could come to the place where he could, God could ask him for anything. And Abraham would say, Yes, sir. And the test, the biggest test, was his son because there was nothing that meant more to him than his son. His son was connected to his promise. God will test you in the area of the thing that you love the most in this world. And, uh, and when you pass that test, you know that you're stepping into the fear of the Lord. When God asks for the thing that you love the most, you're on the fear of the Lord test. Pass it. Hallelujah. So why does God test us so that he can learn about us? No, 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 no. The reason God tests us is because he wants to develop us. He wants to equip us. He wants to strengthen us. He wants to make us better than we are. And so, no, I don't pretend that I wake up every morning hoping for a good test. I don't wake up hoping for uh, fires or tornadoes or wind or rain, <laughs> or uh, some of you have been following my story. Wow, what, have, uh, what an adventure I've had everywhere I go. It's just like weather, crazy weather. Here in Drayton Valley, fires destroying everything. I had a tornado suck up one of my toilets the other day. Uh, rain, wind, just crazy stuff. I go to preach for my buddy Art Lucier in BC. A tornado appears on the property for real at Goshen, and then fire falls on the mountain just up the hill from us. And then pouring rain comes, like literally, while I'm there trying to preach, I got to preach for four minutes and I had to shut it down so that all the men could run up the mountain and put out the fire. I'm going to Quebec tomorrow. <laughs> someone can, can someone please send a message to Quebec? Uh, weather warnings, tornadoes and fires, uh, high speed winds and probably rain. Uh, will be coming over the next few days. Uh, why? I don't have a clue, but I'll just tell you something. God is up to something. God prof God spoke to me, oh, I don't know what it was, it was a year ago. I saw a vision of this grass, uh, this grass wildfire. And as I saw this fire exploding all around in every direction, my buddy Chris Mathis phoned me up and said, Steve, what are you, what's God saying to you right now? And I'm like, uh, I see grass on fire. He said, God's sending a grassroots wildfire and prophesied all these things. And here we are. <laughs> Fires everywhere, tornadoes. Hallelujah. Why? Well, I, you know what? I don't know. I don't know what. I'll tell you this, though. I don't wake up hoping for tornadoes and grass uh, wildfires. I don't uh, hope for tests, Okay. But I recognize that God wants me to be mighty in him. God wants me to be an overcomer. God wants me to be one who fights the devil and gets the harvest. You know, the enemy, he's not like, uh, not like God versus the devil, like some big challenge, okay? The devil is done the second God says he's done, 
Okay, The devil will be destroyed the minute we get to that part of the story. But God is writing a story. And before he destroys the enemy, first he's going to humiliate him. And there's nothing more humiliating to the enemy than being beat by you. <laughs> I mean, if the devil gets beat by God, it's kind of like, well, he's God, of course. But when the God of peace soon crushes Satan underneath your feet, that's humiliating. That makes a good story. When the God of peace crushes Satan under my feet, that's humiliating for the devil. 1 Corinthians 15, 24 says, then the end will come. You gotta realize this has all been written. The story's written. It's not like we don't know where it is, what it is. Read the book. It's a really good story. It says, then the end will come when he, Jesus, will hand the kingdom over to God the Father after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. For he, Jesus, must rule until he has put all his enemies under his feet. Who's that? You. You're the feet of Jesus. So am I. The story is you and I Beat the devil and get the harvest. Now, I'm not one of these people who says, well, everything gets better and better and better. No, no, no. I, I believe we're going to see some dark times. But you're going to be an overcomer. I'm going to be an overcomer if we lean into God and say yes to God. And so, no, I'm not asking you to hope for a bad day tomorrow. But recognize the tests are going to come and trials are going to come and wind and fire and rain and tornadoes and, and some people are going to reject you and some people are going to hate you and sometimes things are going to be difficult. But God is with you. Uh, Psalm 91, 15. I will be with you in trouble. Hallelujah. He didn't say he'd keep you out of trouble. He said, I'll be with you in trouble. And so you will when you'll be an overcomer. And this is the story he's writing for you. This is the story he's writing for me. Why does God test us? Because we need tests. Why does he allow trials? Because they make us awesome. <laughs> That's why we need them. They develop faith in us. They develop the fear of the Lord in us. We need tests. Hallelujah. So thank God for the tests in your life. Consider it pure joy when you face trials of many kind. God's doing a good work in you. Hallelujah. I hope that was encouraging to you. Uh, like, share, and uh, make sure you join. If you haven't already, join my Oil Patch Pulpit community. We're getting more and more censored, so I need your email. That's what it comes down to. You can always unsubscribe, but... Uh, uh, do you want to get our emails? Just send me an email to feedback at oilpatchpulpit.com. Say, Steve, I like your stuff, and I'll send it to you for free, and I'll make sure you know when and where we're gathering. We do have a gathering coming up. I'm in Quebec here the next few days uh, doing some undercover. <laughs> our camp. Me and Art Lucier and a bunch of us, we, we rented this big, huge conference center. Well, the premier and uh, a few of the higher-ups in Quebec found out that we were pro-life and actually canceled our event. Uh, outrageous that we're living in a nation where you... And we weren't even going to preach on it. We weren't going there to have a pro-life event. But then they found out we were pro-life. They said, no, you're not welcome in our province. And so they canceled the, the, the convention center that we were staying in, even though we'd already signed a contract. But you know what? We're going anyway. Hallelujah. We're going anyway. And we're bringing the kingdom with us. Maybe a tornado and, uh, and, and we'll see what kind of fire God sends. Hallelujah. I believe we're going to have a powerful time. We're going to do some prophetic acts. We're going we're gonna to do some stuff on the ground there in Quebec. And God's going to bring a blessing to Quebec. But uh, I'll be there for the next few days. And the next week, um, we're in Spruce Grove. Watch Oil Patch Pulpit Facebook there. Or I'll probably put, send out an email. But we'll be having a tent meeting in Spruce Grove next weekend. And so love to have you out there. We're going to have a good time. My buddy Chris Mathis is going to be preaching. I know the Summit Sounds is coming. Art Lucier and their gang, I'll be preaching. It's going to be a wonderful time under the big tent. Chris Lindbergh's big revival tent, he's coming down. So we're going to have a glorious time in the presence of the Lord. I hope you can make it out to Spruce Grove uh, next weekend. But uh, anyways, Hope that was a blessing to you. Thank God for the tests in your life. We'll see you soon.